Hi Fred, it's really great to, to welcome Fred Bidulf here this morning to the Williamson Art Gallery. As you see, we're surrounded by all sorts of things to do with ships and here in Birkenhead, what better background could we have than to interview somebody who's worked on the docks in Birkenhead and very kindly agreed to come along and talk to us for the And the River Flows On project. So uh, Fred, could you start by just telling us a bit about yourself and about the time you spent on the docks and when that was and so on? Certainly, I'd be very pleased to. I left, I left school in 1960 and went straight to art school. Uh, I'd won a, won a scholarship and spent a year at uh, the Wallasey Art School in Central Park in, in uh, Wallasey. But um, I wasn't bringing any money into the household, which is uh, very important in those days, and uh, my mother suggested I get a job. So the following year, I um, started at Alfred Holtz as an apprentice sign writer. That was in the summer of uh, 1961. Um, at first, uh, I was just given menial jobs, which is uh, the norm in them days. The, uh, hours are very interesting because uh, the basic uh, hourly week was 44 hours, so we worked the five days plus Saturday morning, which was the norm. Yeah. Um, and we started at half seven in the morning. If we were five minutes late, we lost half an hour. If we got there a minute past eight o'clock, we lost the whole morning. You couldn't just go in any, any time. Um, I mean, bank holidays were, were all different in them days. Uh, if uh, uh, New Year's Day wasn't a bank holiday, and it was frowned upon if, if you sort of didn't turn up at those times on New Year's Day, so you couldn't go out and sort of celebrate <laughs> as, as it's done these days. Um, I found it very exciting the whole five years I was there. Um, I enjoyed every minute of it, um, I enjoyed what I was doing, but I enjoyed the experience, uh, you know, I've got lots of stories, I mean some sad ones as well, but um, I um, started my wages with £3.7 and 6 a week, uh, I gave my mother the £3 and I had the 7 and 6 which I think is equal to uh, uh, 35, 37.5p. Yeah. But, you know, it went, it went a long way. Um, in terms of the actual work you were doing as a sign writer, what did that involve? Right, yeah. The main job of the sign writer was to uh, ensure that all these signs on the ship, in very important signs, such as no smoking in areas where it was highly dangerous to smoke, were all clear and up to date. Um, we had uh, different crews on the, the ship, the Blue Funnel ships. Uh, we had Chinese crew, we had Dutch crew. I can even remember the, the Dutch for no smoking, which is verboten to <laughs> Um I don't know what it, it meant in Chinese, and I, I, I could, we didn't write it. We, we, we made stencils of uh, the characters in Chinese and put them on. Another important job was the tank sanding boards, and what that was was um, massive big uh, chalk boards with uh, names down one side, sign, sign written, you know, uh, the names of the different tanks, and then a little space uh, beside of which could be uh, marked with uh, chalk, and uh, these the line, straight lines were put on with a straight edge and a, what they call a sword liner. Um, so you know, uh, there was a, a quite a lot of work to do. Uh, most of the time though, the Blue Funnel ships in Victoria Dock were perhaps only there for about 48 hours. They'd come in and uh, discharge it out again. And um, what the painters had to do was to make sure all these signs were on, or the sign lights, make sure all the signs were on. But also the painters had to paint the whole ship within that time. So they weren't necessarily new ships, they were ships that needed refurbishment as it were. Yes, yeah. Well, I mean, Blue Funnel at the time wanted uh, every ship that went out to look as though it's brand new. They wow. wanted all yeah. the paintwork to be uh, pristine. The funnel was painted. Uh, this, the sides, um, the white, which uh, we re refer to uh, the fish plates, which was the, the white part of the upper part of the decks. Um, the, the lower part, the black, the black was all painted. And then the bottom part, which was the boot topping, which is the orange that you see on the side of these models here, uh, that was all painted as well. And sometimes uh, we'd have to paint over uh, water 
um, ice and yeah. snow. Um, and I, I do remember one time when one of the ships was going out of the, the lock and it had gone through the gate, sorry, it had gone through the bridge uh, in, into the basin right out to the sea and we were still painting it. Wow. <laughs> in, in our scow, which is, uh, you know, um, a triple decker uh, scow. Uh, so it's like a cradle sort of thing? Um, it was a square ended uh, rowing boat, but you didn't row it uh, with two oars on either side as a normal rowing boat. It had the um, oar locks on e the front and the back, so you use one oar mm. and you use a figure of eight action to, to move it along. And uh, you know, a triple decker it was quite heavy. Yeah. Uh, but you know, uh, if you had the technique right. So you're doing that and you're painting at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds well, as if you had to be quite uh, agile. They, they had a crew of uh, three on, on this uh, scow, um, you know, which uh, would go up and down the dock. I mean, um, there was one, one time when uh, we were in Bitson dock and the, the wind got it and it just, we couldn't control it. And it just flew down the dock and, and hit the, the, the end of the dock and smashed. Um, lucky enough, uh, we were able to jump off before it did. Um, and what was, what was the sort of general atmosphere of the docks like in those days? Because you're describing obviously a very active, um, lots of action going on around the Blue Funnel ships. They're coming in, they're going out very quickly, you're doing all the painting and so on. But what about the whole sort of atmosphere? Presumably there was lots of other stuff going on around the other docks as well. Yes, um, the, the ships, it was very, very busy compared to what you might imagine it now. Um, and because the, the cranes were, were being used, there was no containers in them days. So, you know, the ship's cranes would uh, pull stuff out the hold and uh, ma mainly in a netting of some kind. Um, and haul it up out of the hold of the ship and put it onto the side. And um, they would be um, manhandled. You know, they, mm. you know, they would have uh, um, parts, that, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, trucks. You know, trucks. Trucks, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hand-pulled trucks in some cases and uh, four, four clip trucks. Um, I always remember what, at one time when, uh, in fact, it wasn't Victoria Dock, it was over in, in Gladstone Dock because we had to go over there and, and the paint the ships, check the, the size uh, over there as well. But um, they used to um, offload uh, India rubber and, and they were massive big um, cubes of rubber, pure rubber, and one of them dropped. <laughs> and you can imagine, you know, a rubber ball yeah. bouncing. Well, that's what this did, but it didn't just bounce. It, 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 and I, I'm not sure whether you know somebody was was, was injured and you know caused some serious yeah. damage. So it sounds as if it was really quite a vibrant atmosphere to work in at that time. It it was. Uh, everything you know was, was busy. Um, of course, we never wore hard hats. Um, we didn't know about hard hats. No. The health and safety. Uh, didn't exist in, 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 in those two. I'm sure it's, sorry, I, I shouldn't say that. They did have uh, health and safety, but it wasn't um, adhered to no. the same as it is now. I'm, I'm not just blaming the employers for that. It's just the atmosphere of the way yeah, things were. They just never bothered, never thought about. Mm. I mean, um, you know, we used to paint the funnel. Yeah, I, you know, I was a sign writer, but um, you had a chance to go out and work with uh, the painters. And when I, I used to watch them uh, up on, on, on the uh, funnels and, and, and in the scow and things like that, and I said, yeah, I want to go and have a go at that, um, especially sort of um, up the funnel, because it was, uh, we used uh, what's, what's called a bosun's chair. Oh, I know, yeah. And it was just you know, a small, small mm. plank of wood yeah. with a rope around a pulley and down, and uh, the labourer would have all of it down below. And of course, uh, there was no, no safety or guidelines, or you didn't have any hard at. Uh, if you fell, you fell off. If the labourer all of a sudden just let go of the rope, <laughs> then you were in for it. So, uh, for you though, it was a good time, even though presumably, it, well, you, you described the working conditions, you know, were quite tough, much yeah. stricter perhaps than we might expect now. And presumably in all weathers, the actual physical conditions for the, for the people working down on the docks were tough as well. Yes, yeah, I mean, they, you know, they did work in all conditions. And were there still guys who were just being taken on for the day in those, uh, by the time you were working there? Were there still 
guys who were having to wait and see whether they were getting work that day or were most people actually contracted to work by then? Right. Um, in Ben Birkin and Victoria Dock, um, most of them were employed. Mm. Uh, it, it was still carried on in uh, Liverpool. Yeah. Where, you know, that was the dockers rather than the, um, the staff of the yeah. uh, shipping companies. Yeah. Um, see, my father worked for Alfred Hulse. Um, yeah. he, he was right through the war with him, and he was uh, what they call a shore boatswain. Uh, my elder brother, eldest brother, he, he was um, a midshipman and a, a later a captain for Blue Funnel. Uh, my other brother, he, he worked for Blue Funnel as well. And I, I think I think that that was uh, accepted with a lot of families yeah. on, on Merseyside at the time. Um, I was the, I was the only sign writer. But by that time, by the time you were working there. There were not so many of the dockers actually working on the, the dock side at Birkenhead. Um, the, the, the way, you know, but uh, Birkenhead wasn't uh, anywhere near as busy as Liverpool. No, no. Well, that's great. I'm sure, Fred, though, you've got one or two more stories that we can ask you to tell in a moment. Telling me earlier a, a story to do with um, when you were painting up on a ship a bit like this one. Can you tell us a bit about that? Very much like this one. Um, this grey contraption here is the radar and um, it was a Sionite's job to paint the inside of the reflector a matte black. Uh, I'm not quite sure why but I think it was um, reflected better. Anyway this day I was up painting it and um, all of a sudden I heard the motor start up and I jumped clear and it was um, the other apprentice who'd done it on purpose. <laughs> to try and kill me, I would think, I don't know. But um, I jumped down, lucky enough it didn't, I jumped down again, down the deck. <coughs> I'm not sure whether he was over here or wherever, but um, there's a, a life belt attached to the side there. And we'll have a look, there's a, a, a full size one just over there. And the life belt is launched by pulling the pin out of the side. I was only 17 at the time, I was 1962. I wasn't familiar with everything. I pulled the pin out to go and hit him because I wanted to kill him. <laughs> and as I was walking round towards him, there was an almighty scream from over the side of the ship. I thought, do I look? It felt as though that had something to do with me. <laughs> so I come to the end here and I looked over and there was two painters on a plank and a rope. That's the way he painted this uh, white bit, which they call the fish plates. And all I can think is that, well, I'm, I could work it out because this had gone, the light belt had gone, and it's on a big long rope with a big heavy um, light with a massive big battery. And so, as if it goes over, the light will go into the water and flash on and off so we can see what the person who's. And um, of course, I had to uh, later on apologise to him because at first I went like that and just come back again, so they couldn't see who it was. But uh, you know, I did own up to it. So um, that must have been yeah, quite a scary story. Really, it could have had a, some fairly bad outcomes. It, it certainly could. I mean, from the start, I may have been killed, and them two may have been killed. You know, so. So that's just one of a number of adventures, I imagine. I did get him back though. To, we used to paint in the rain and we had the scout and we used to paint black and like massive big uh, containers of black gloss and we used to big roll that on the side of the ship around here you know getting this black and quite often we'd, we'd paint the plimsoll line out paint the plimsoll out to redo it again on this day um, I was with Ian and I was doing the sculling and you'd school on the figure eight, and I could get quite fast. This is a single decker scout. And Ian is at the front with the big container of back gloss and his roll in the other hand. There's foot on the gun one like that. Hurry up, Fred, he said to me. I said, OK, Ian. So I, got, and I could see us going into the side of the, the key, the dock. And I just went as fast as I could. And I never stopped. And I hit the key. And Ian went right into the dock with the black gloss and everything and it seemed like ages before he come back up again I thought oh I've killed him <laughs> but 
he did come up. He, he surfed like a big whale, and he come and he had a sound rested on all his wet, wet weather gear and everything. He come up right through all the black gloss. So it was covered. It was covered in it. Well, I think you did get your own back then, didn't I you? I said sorry to him, <laughs> but still laughing. And didn't you tell us there was another story to do with this propeller at the front? Yeah, the propeller, um, we had again in this uh, single decker scow, we had to paint the, um, the draft marks on the side and then you can see them there by the propeller. Um, so we, we, would, we would be in the, um, the scow and a, a, we'd have a rope coming around here tied to that and another rope going around the other side so we could pull, it, pull in the boat right into the side so we could paint the numbers on hmm. um, these, these ships had what they call um, time, time trials and it was to do with um, getting the propeller in the right time and the same as you would do in, in, a, in a car yeah. and, uh, but it only turned very slowly yeah. and our boat was right up against that propeller and it, it started to turn and it lifted the scow up out the water <laughs> And the more it went, and at one point it must have been at almost 45 degrees. And I was with uh, Charlie, Charlie, you know, my uh, uh, boss sign writer, and I said, We're going to have to swim for it, Charlie. He said, No, we're not. I said, What do you mean, no, we're not? I said, he said, uh, I can't swim. I said, I'll tell you what, I said, I'll jump in first, and you jump on top of me, and I'll pull you to the side. No. He wouldn't have it, so I thought he's, he's gonna he's gonna drown. He's gonna kill himself, get himself killed or drown. Lucky enough, we were shouting, of course, and somebody on the side here heard us, and they stopped the time trial and stopped the propeller turning. So it sounds like you've had a bit of luck. Nine lives you must have needed to work on the docks in those days. It was all. Cool. This is a full size model um, of the life belt that I uh, pulled the pin on, and this is the pin. At the time I didn't know because this was closed in and uh, all I could see was, was a pin. I, I must have had it in my mind like in the old um, sailing ships where they had these, uh, if I remember right, on, on, on the decks and I think they were for attacking people. <laughs> so I, 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 I pulled this out and then this, this rolled down and it nearly hit the other two painters on taking the side of the ship. So you bit sort of thought you were in Pirates of the Caribbean before yeah, it's time, it. something like that. I was going 17. <laughs> yeah, well that's, that's another, another good story then, isn't it? Okay.